To me, a mentor is someone who sees you for who you are and for your potential. A mentor is someone who's invested in you and believes in you. And honestly and truly, I believe a mentor really loves you. Welcome to my channel. My name is Erica and I'm currently a fourth year medical student. Using this YouTube channel, I really like to create videos that I think will be helpful for other medical students or for even for pre-meds who are considering a career in medicine. But in this video, I wanted to do something a little bit different. I want to take a minute to thank some people who have impacted my life in a very deep and meaningful way. But I think what really helped me to become the person I am today is the support and love and inspiration that I've gotten from other people. Throughout my life, I've really thrived because of the mentorship that I've gotten. To me, a mentor is someone to look up to, someone who inspires you, someone I immediately think to go to when I feel lost or without direction, someone who doesn't just tell me what to do, but someone who gives me courage and empowers me to make my own decisions. As I'm filming this video, I'm only a few short weeks away from graduating from medical school. And with everything that's happening in the world, it definitely feels different graduating right now. But one of the silver linings that I found in this complete tragedy is that I've had more time to be more self-reflective. And during this interval, I've had a lot of time to think about all of the people who've touched my life. And I wanted to make this video as a means of thanking those individuals and sharing some of the experiences I've had with them that have completely changed my life. I wish I could make this video hours and hours long because there are so many people who have made such important impacts on me. But to keep this in a digestible sized video, I'm going to focus on just a few of those individuals. My first ever mentors in my life, my parents. I am so incredibly grateful for my parents. My parents have always been people that I've looked up to. When I ever needed advice, they were the first people I thought to go to. And when I was younger, honestly, I believed that everything they said was the best advice I could possibly get. And obviously, as I've grown older, I've recognized that no one's perfect, not even our parents, which is, I know, shocking. But still then, regardless of their flaws and faults and any different imperfections that they may have, I still think of them as some of the first people that I'll go to for any important advice that I need in my life. They've always been a huge source of inspiration to me. During summers when I was younger, even as young as in elementary and middle school, I used to work at my parents' private practice. They're currently both still primary care physicians down in Las Vegas. And I remember when I was younger, spending time kind of working at their office, answering phones, filing charts away, and just being in the office, I was able to see just small glimpses of how my parents interacted with patients themselves. And I think that's truly where I first got my idea of medicine as my calling and as something that I wanted to do too. And then at home, when they would talk about how much they cared about their work and how much they cared about their patients, all of that really resonated with me and that was a huge factor for inspiring me to go into medicine in the first place. If you don't know, I actually went through a BSMD program, which means that at the tender age of 18, I made the decision to accept a safe seat in medical school. So by the time I was 18, I already knew I wanted to be a doctor and I was dedicated to this passion. And I really thank my parents so much for allowing me to have a glimpse into what's such an incredible calling. Not only in terms of inspiring my career, but I think my parents have always taught me to be a good person. They are the ones who have instilled in me the characteristics I find most important, which is being honest with yourself and with others, genuinely loving other people, centering your life around caring for other people. And then of course, they gave me my two siblings who I love so much and who've taught me to trust to others and share and think about other people before yourself. I'm grateful that they allowed me to play multiple sports growing up, that they were at every different sporting event that I was competing in, that when I was in elementary school, they took the time to check over my homework and make sure I did it right and answer any questions that I might have, that they plan a family vacation every single year. I'm grateful that they let me go to tennis summer camps and gymnastics summer camps to help me get better training in those sports that I cared about so much. I'm grateful that every time there's an award ceremony or a research presentation, they want to be there and they come. I'm grateful for the financial support that they've given me in paying for a private education from preschool all the way till 12th grade and then continuing to support me in through college and through medical school. I feel so grateful that they've given me the most invaluable tool in my life 
in education. I'm grateful that they've taught me what it means to be dedicated, what it means to persevere, what it means to find a way. I mean, I think this is pretty obvious, but I don't think I would be the person I am today without the guidance of my parents. The second mentor that I want to talk about is Ryan Wolfington, also referred to as Wolf. I met Wolf through the No Quit Tennis Academy, which was centered out of Lorenzi Park. Actually, we started at the Hilton and then moved to Lorenzi Park. I talk a lot about that gut feeling and following your instincts and how that's kind of what I do to make the most important decisions in my life. And I really credit my understanding to that process to him. He really taught me what it meant to follow what you felt was right and to sometimes override the lists and the algorithms and even logic to come to some of the most important life decisions. He also always used the phrase, do right equals feel right. And that was something that really resonated with me because it was something that you could actually experience. He taught me that as long as you do what's right, follow your instincts, be a good person that everything ends up okay. Something really unique about working with Wolf was that he had this whole mentorship group, a bunch of different kids and alumni who are basically just people who have graduated high school, who've gone through or have been touched by this program. Every winter in December, there's actually a leadership alumni retreat, a chance to come back to our roots in Las Vegas and to see all the new people who have joined the group and just to kind of see where everyone is at. And it's really wonderful because we talk about the highlights of our year, the biggest challenges of our year, things that we've been able to overcome and how. And I think that it's really an inspiring time of the year where I get to hear other people's stories and they wanna hear me share mine as well. The third mentor that I want to thank is Angie Freely. When I first moved to Reno for college, I definitely felt like I didn't fit in and it was really hard for me being super introverted and very shy to make friends. I really was looking for a hobby to to take up some of my time and to make me feel like I was part of a community. So during my freshman year, I was looking at different yoga studios. I had actually been introduced to yoga by Wolf, who I mentioned earlier. And so the first studio that kind of popped up was called The Studio, and it was in Midtown here in Reno. And so I just decided to try it out. It actually had some of the cheapest rates in Reno too, and that was like an incredible <laughs> motivation for me to check out that studio. So I went, um, I took a few classes. I wanted to see what the different instructors had. And one day I took an Angie class and she is just the most inspiring, incredible yoga instructor. I mean, she leads you through a great class physically, but also every single class, she has some sort of intention. And so sometimes the intention is gratitude or energy flows where the attention goes. She always has some sort of real life lesson that she teaches you through these poses. And honestly, after having gone through that class, I feel like if a yoga class doesn't provide that for me, it doesn't feel like the right class for me. I started going to only her classes after a while. She had like a Monday and Wednesday night class I'd go to, and then a Tuesday and Thursday morning class, and they just happened to be perfect for my college schedule at that time. So as I got more experienced in yoga practice, she started talking about yoga teacher training during class. And that really piqued my interest. And I honestly didn't have any idea what it would be, but she kind of talked about it as if it was more of a spiritual journey over learning how to teach people to do an activity. During that time, I was going through a really tough breakup. I had been dating this guy for, I think like five or six years. And a lot of my identity, since I spent so much of my formative years with him, was based on the idea that I was part of this relationship and that this was the future that I had for myself. And so I think I really defined a large part of me by that relationship. And so when we ended up breaking up, I felt so lost. I felt like I didn't know who I was and I needed to figure out, I needed to figure out why I felt so empty and why I felt like I didn't even know who I was anymore. I figured, well, I'm going through this transition in my life and this yoga teacher training course is about to start. I think this might be something that just is meant to be. And so I asked more about it and I found out that it was like $2,000 to do this course. Being a tutor at the tutoring center in college, it wasn't quite enough to pay for the course. Um, so I asked if there was any way to do like a work study program with her. And I think she really heard my story and resonated with me as a person. And I was allowed to do that. So in exchange for a discount, 
not in the yoga teacher training course, I would clean the yoga studio after class a few times a week. That experience was truly pivotal. It taught me so much about life, but I think if I have to sum up everything I learned, and there's so much, the most important lesson that I learned from yoga teacher training and from Angie herself, there is so much that is outside of our own control. And we can't change what events happen to us or what events happen around us. But what we can control is our response to an event. You can plan as much as you want. You can write out a schedule. You can make these goals. And sometimes life just happens. And sometimes we don't get to do what we want to do because life has a different plan for us. And I think what helped me the most was learning that that's okay. It's okay that we can't control everything. And what makes it okay is that we do have control over how we respond to something. When some adversity rises before us, we have the chance to put all of our energy into being negative, into feeling sorry for ourselves. But we also have the power to respond in a more positive way. Use that energy to be inspired to do something else. I think that is one of the most important life lessons that I've learned and it's been applicable pretty much every single day of my life. And I really have Angie to thank for learning that lesson. And the last mentor that I wanna talk about is Dr. Edizadi. I actually didn't meet Dr. Edizadi until a couple years into medical school. The first context in which I met her was through a research group on implicit bias. But just in that research, we didn't have a ton of direct one-on-one -on -one interaction. So I knew who she was and I heard her speak so eloquently in the group, but I didn't actually, you know, interact too much with her. It wasn't until my fourth year of medical school that she became one of the most influential people in my life. If you haven't seen my Why I Picked OBGYN video yet, then watching that first may give you a little bit more context here. But basically, OBGYN was my last rotation of third year, and I didn't think it was something I was going to like, and then I got there and I ended up loving it. At that time, I had already had four plastic surgery away rotations planned because that's what I thought I wanted to go into. I reached out to the clerkship director who is Dr. Johnson and he's also an incredible kind so helpful human um, and he said you should really talk to Dr. Edizadi she's our chair she's so helpful and I think she would be a really great guide and mentor for you throughout this process I was like oh yeah I know who she is through our research group and I haven't interacted with her a ton but I would love to and so we made a we had a meeting and we kind of talked about what I wanted in a career and why I was feeling so conflicted between plastic surgery and now OBGYN. She never told me what I should be doing. She was always just incredible, incredible sounding board. I honestly don't even know how she does it, but I hope one day I can learn. But she just knows the exact questions to point towards me that get me thinking. After that first meeting, we kind of made this game plan. Okay, I'm gonna go on this first plastic surgery away rotation and I'm gonna reassess during or after or both, probably both, um, just to see kind of how I'm feeling about that specialty and if it's still something I wanna passionately pursue or if I should open my mind more towards OBGYN. And so I went to that away rotation and about two weeks in, I was pretty sure I did not want to do plastics, but I still had this doubt in me because for so long I had my mindset on plastic surgery and it was what I wanted to do. And then all of a sudden my whole life just changed in like a matter of a couple months. So I remember during this away rotation, I called her like multiple times. She just knew what exact questions to ask me to get me to think about my life and what I wanted and even the kind of person that I wanted to be. And when I finally decided for certain that I did not want to do plastics and that I wanted to go wholeheartedly into OBGYN, she was the one that helped me kind of like make a plan of how I was going to switch my efforts entirely from plastics to OB. When I was fortunate enough to get my away rotations in OBGYN, she was the one that I called when I was having breakdowns during the rotations because I felt like I wasn't good enough or when I felt like I didn't know what I was doing. She always knew what to say and actual actionable steps that she helped me develop to become a better rotating student, feel more confident in myself and to believe in myself. All that time that she invested in me meant so much. Much. And then when it came time to applying to programs, just having her advising in terms of what I should be looking for in programs, writing me an incredibly strong letter of recommendation, practicing interview questions with me multiple times. And then I also remember there was one interview in particular I pretty much just bombed. I did so horrible. I got so in my head about it. And I just remember texting her and just saying like, oh my gosh, I ruined my chances at this program. And she called me like immediately. And she was like, what's going on? Like, are you okay? What's going, what's happening? What happened at this interview? And like, you know, even though I felt horrible about the interview, just 
talking to her and getting her perspective. She just really helped me get out of my head and get past that experience. And then even just a few months ago when I was creating my rank order list, she was the one I went to to ask, what kind of things should I be thinking about when I make this rank list? These are my experiences, what do you think? And she never, never told me what program to rank first. All she did was prompt me with the questions that allowed me to think for myself and to follow my gut instinct and to do what was right for me. And I just think that it takes a really special person to put that much time into someone and to inspire someone so much the way she did. And I just feel like that was such a special bond that I didn't think that I was going to get in medical school. I'm just so grateful for the way that she helped me throughout this entire process. And I could only hope and dream that one day I can be that person for someone else. So I wrote this card for her originally that I was going to send, but I actually wanted to make this video to send to her instead. Um, but I still wanted to read the card so that she knows what I wrote. And I wrote this actually kind of... Um, in the middle, I think, of the application process or something. Um, but yeah, anyways. Dear Dr. Adizadi, I don't think I'll ever be able to thank you enough. You know how much mentorship means to me, but I don't think you'll ever know how much you have meant to me in this process. When I told Dr. Johnson I was having second thoughts on my career path and he set up a meeting with you, I was both relieved, thankful for a familiar face from the IRAP group, and also a little anxious because I hate wasting anyone's time but you never made me feel like I was a waste of time. Advisors always talk about finding your people in a specialty, and I felt that with you. I really felt like I immediately clicked with you the first time we met. From that point on, I had so much trust in you. You were the first person I went to when I totally realized that plastics was not the right specialty for me. It was a scary and a little bit miserable time for me, but you knew exactly how to keep things positive and how to keep me motivated and believe in myself. You knew how to cue me to reflect on my career options and how they related to my values, my life, my happiness. I really don't think I could have navigated that path in my journey without you. The amount of time that you've spent with me, advising me, going through residency programs, preparing for interviews, writing me a letter of recommendation, helping me with my scholarly concentration and just inspiring me was truly invaluable. You have truly deeply impacted me and the physician and mentor I hope to become. Thank you. There are so many people who have impacted my life in significant ways from the people I've mentioned in this video to my siblings and my best friends and my boyfriend and other attending physicians who have guided me along the way, Dr. Calvo, Dr. Lim, Dr. Hernandez, Dr. Johnson. I honestly don't even have time to list everyone who's impacted my life here, um, but just know that there's a lot of you and you know who you are. To me, a mentor is someone who sees you for who you are and for your potential. A mentor is someone who's invested in you and believes in you. And honestly and truly, I believe a mentor really loves you. I only hope that I can be that same mentor for my patients, for my future family, and hopefully one day even for medical students like myself. So mom, dad, Wolf, Angie, Dr. Edizadi, thank you all so much for just being the people that you are, for entering my life, and for investing the amount of time and energy that you have into me. I don't think I'll ever be able to portray how much you've all impacted my life and how much you mean to me, but I guess I'll just say this. Thank you.